Hey there, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. This is a big day for me because I've got some important announcements to make. I wanna tell you real quick the story that led me to meet this individual right here. So, as you know, I publish a whole bunch of deep technical articles and I introduce a lot of data in my videos. I've realized I need better tools to tell these technical stories and to do justice to the scientific methodologies that you need to go through in order to produce a conclusive result. So, through a mutual friend, I met Adam McDonald. Adam is the guy behind Auto Trickler and he's got some other technologies as well that I'm very excited about. So, Adam, before we get into that, tell us about you. All right, so uh, my background before I got into shooting was uh, software, electronics, um, inventing technologies and then I got into shooting about five years ago um, immediately just got right into load development reloading um, and the scientific approach to shooting um, last year I, I shoot f-class mainly uh, long range in Canada and last year I won the Canadian uh, FTR championship and I also started a business in um, 2016 started with the auto trickler here um, you know really leveraging 3d printing and assembling out of my home to keep the cost down but solve some really serious problems. So you were actually a shooter and a competitor and you had a, a serious problem that you wanted to solve, right? That yeah. I need to produce precise powder chargers for my loads but I, I want to do it quickly. Right, right? There, there was no really good automated way to measure powder charges to the kernel and load 50 or 100 or 200 rounds for a weekend and without spending an entire day at it. So this was a solution to automate the process and get one foot per second sort of precision in your powder charges. Mm -hmm. And I've become aware that that's really important to me as well and that was initially kind of you know what led me to you. So you launched Auto Trickler as a, as a product and it's gone through various iterations. How about the other technologies? So once I had powder that was accurate uh, I needed to measure the velocity so that I could do load development and I realized that pretty much all chronographs on the market have some element of random error. And I had the idea, what if you have two sensors and you put them 15 feet apart? Then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you can extremely precisely measure the difference between shot to shot to shot. And that's what you really need to measure your SD for long range accuracy. Right, because so, if your chronograph tells you a number, you might be inclined to just believe it. Right. But when you account for the random error, it might be misleading. And that's one of the things that I really want to you know, dive a little bit deeper on is have the good measurement tool, but then also have the good powder measurement and dispensing technology so that I can really have confidence in, in the data that I'm producing. Because right, if I'm shooting out to a thousand yards, which you guys have seen the videos on recently, it becomes more and more and more of a factor. So I've realized that's definitely an area that I kind of you know want to hone in on. So the, the combination of these two tools is awesome, but it's, <laughs> it's better than that, right? Tell us about ShotMarker. So shot marker is really interesting. Um, this is a system that will measure the point of impact and velocity of a bullet at any distance. Uh, it's sensors that you put, acoustic sensors that you put on a target frame. It can be any size target frame and it will work out to miles. As long as the bullet's supersonic when it gets to the target, it will so measure you need that it. crack. It has to be, it, the whole point of it is it measures the supersonic shock wave as mm -hmm. it hits the sensors. So mm -hmm. if it's subsonic, like pistol or 22 LR, not necessarily going to work. Mm -hmm. But for long range shooting where you can't see the bullet holes on the paper and you want a instant feedback, mm -hmm. uh, it measures the shots. It will score, like if you want to simulate a competition for practice. Yep. And it's also, um, you know, it's great for personal use. And it's, it's low cost, you know, like $7.99 for a single system. This is the first version of this technology brought down to a level where individuals can really afford yep. it. And then it's also extremely scalable. So you can run matches with 10 or 20 or 30 or even 250 targets, yep. uh, all from this system without like crazy servers and stuff like that. Yes. And as I've been starting, starting to shoot more at 1,000 yards, what I've realized is there's kind of a lot of wasted ammo and time just getting onto the target and seeing what's happening. So with shot marker, you know, for example, on this property, I have to go up and paint the targets or set paper. That's hiking one hill and then hike to the other hill to shoot. What shot marker enables me to do is to set an aiming point, which could be a steel target that's painted, and set the frame around it. And we can make that frame dimension really large. That way, if I have a bad wind call or if I have bad elevation, bad dope, I can get onto that target really quickly. And then multiple people 
can shoot that same aiming point. We don't have to look at the bullet holes because we can see the feedback on the display. Right, and you'd be able to set one of these up at 100, at 300, at 600, at 1,000 and a mile, and yep. just shoot any target you want, and you have instant feedback and velocity right to where you are, and right on your tablet. Yep. So if there's a, an inconsistency that we're trying to account for, whether it be an inconsistent velocity or an inconsistent uh, ballistic coefficient on a bullet that's leading to an inconsistent velocity, we have that chronograph data and we have the point of impact data at the target. So you guys can see why I'm really excited <laughs> about this stuff. There's three technologies. So I wanted to announce a couple things myself today. The first is I'm officially adopting the two box chrono, the auto trickler, and the shot marker as tools that I'm going to incorporate into my research and into my stories. And that's going to be better stories and more because I can do it more efficiently and to more precision. Okay, but then a funny thing happened when Avin and I met. We were talking about all of the conjecture in the precision rifle shooting culture and sports and community. And I discovered right away that we both have some common goals, and that's to take different, you could call them myths or hypotheses, different phenomena that people want to know definitive results about, and we could do scientific research, collect data, and this guy is a statistics wizard. He's a little bit humble about this, but he is very thorough in terms of determining probability and doing the work to know how certain a result is going to be. So I'm going to take some of Adam's deep knowledge that he's really learned because of the need to do analysis on shooting data, and I'm going to boil that down into understandable, simple guidelines and rules so that you can be, you're not going to have as much random results one day or to the next. And when you do lock down on a load, you can have higher certainty that you've done the work and shot the number of shots needed to do that, right? Like I was shooting five shots at a time and I thought that was roughly adequate. So basically, <laughs> uh, like when I started shooting and I really wanted to win competitions and in the world of competition long range shooting, you know, you really want to shrink your groups. It's not a matter of hitting steel or not hitting steel. It's a matter of getting every single point inside of a you know, one minute circle basically. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. wind and there's all these factors. So everything you can do to, to improve the chances of a higher score has means you have a greater chance of winning. So so I spend just as much time at the range doing load development, you know, collecting my data into spreadsheets, trying to figure out what I could try next to to make sure that when I go to the match the next week, it's it's gonna be the best result possible. Yep. So 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 I would have questions like does neck tension matter? Or should I lube my bullets? Or uh, should I full length size or should I neck size? Like all of yep. these things I was bombarded with questions and I didn't know what to do. So I would do tests. I would I would go to the range and I would fire 10 shots with one uh, you know, one, one thing and then I would fire 10 shots of another thing and I would get a result and I would compare them. But then I started ask, I started noticing the results were essentially random and I wasn't really yes. learning anything. So, so Which the question, is what I was getting with five shot groups exactly, yeah. is you get groups that are this big and then that big or this big and maybe the SD is doing the same thing. Right, like one day it's higher than the other and then right. the other day the thing that you expect to be worse was actually better and it didn't really make any sense. So was it the gun? Was it the atmospheric conditions or was it just you know, the statistical probability. Well, that's the thing. So I right. didn't understand statistics, you know, three years ago, mm -hmm. and I set out to try to figure out what was causing this, because I had the sense that, well, do you need to fire five shots or 10 shots or 50 shots or 100 shots? How do you know how many shots you need to fire? Yep. Well, it turns out there's an equation for that, and I figured out what that was and how to apply it to shooting, and right there, I, it all started to make sense. All of a sudden, I was thinking differently about how I was testing, and, and I mean, I did way better in competition as a result. And so the takeaway for me was, instead of shooting five shots to come to a conclusion, I might need to shoot 20 or 30 shots. And, and it, it depends on what you're testing, Yes. and it depends on how different your results are from each other. If you're testing something that's terrible versus something that's amazing, you only need three shots to know the difference. Yep. But if they're similar, then you need more and more shots, and you can't draw a conclusion until you have statistical significance in the result. Yes, and it's complicated, and not everyone wants to learn statistics, hence the goal to make it more understandable and to reduce it down to common guidelines. So to try to bring this to the world, <laughs> I started a blog a couple of years ago, yep. uh, pretty much right when I developed this two-box chronograph, because this chronograph will measure to pretty much one foot per second precision, which I needed to do my testing. But 
Uh, it was hard for people to understand why that mattered. So I started a blog to try to bring the statistics and this information to, to the world of shooting, um, to, to get that information out there. I have there's some articles. There's going to be a link in the video description. Yeah, it's on my <laughs> website, autotrickler.com. Uh, there's a couple articles on statistics. There's articles on load development, and there's some stories about my uh, load development process through to competing at the Worlds and the Nationals in 2017. Um, going forward, I'm really excited to work with Gavin to reach a larger audience and do more frequent videos on these technical concepts. I really would like to ask to ask and answer the questions on things like barrel harmonics and annealing and neck tension and actually solve these problems. And with Gavin's help, I'm, that's going to go really well, I think. So you're on in New Brunswick on the east coast of Canada. I'm over here on the west coast of the United States. We're going to have to figure out how to do this remotely, but that, I think that'll be kind of part of the fun. Yep, for sure. So the announcements, I'm officially incorporating these tools into the work that I do and the stories that I publish. Adam and I are going to be partnering on some of these technical investigations and sharing and publishing the results, but there's one more thing. We may be announcing something <laughs> soon. Let's leave it at that. Okay, <laughs> I'm excited to talk more about that. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed to Gavin Tube with notifications, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out Adam's blog on autotrickler.com. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.